Hello, my name is Sinclair Dinan, Deputy Director uh, Research uh, in the Coral Bell School of Asia Pacific Affairs. And I'm here today to announce the 2017 Horizon Seminar Series, uh, which will be led uh, by my colleague, Dr. Paul Kenny. And this year is on the theme of a new age of leadership, populism and politics of leadership in the Asia uh, Pacific and, and wider region. Um, the seminar series is aimed to really nurture collaborative research and conversations uh, across disciplines. Um, we've had three to date and we're delighted that this year's is on such an uh, unimportant and, and topical uh, theme. Um, Paul, um, can you tell us a little bit about your thinking behind this, uh, devising this theme and, and where it comes from? I know that you've done a lot of work in the area of leadership in India in particular. Actually, I began my PhD research uh, on this back in uh, 2010 or so, before populism was really uh, in the news. And what my PhD thesis was concerned with was this earlier breakdown in democracy in the 1970s in India, uh, when Indira Gandhi uh, refashioned herself as uh, a populist instead of this old-style uh, political leader who used uh, patronage and goods distribution to win power. So Mrs. Gandhi's transformation into a populist eventually culminated in the authoritarian emergency of the 1970s, which resulted in the suspension of democracy. And so I was trying to understand this uh, earlier uh, transition to uh, authoritarian rule. Uh, since then, populism is now, uh, of course, uh, all over the news. Uh, so as I've completed this uh, book on the, the former turn to populism, uh, I've become interested in uh, contemporary populism. When you say it's all over the news, obviously <coughs> we're, we're thinking of uh, Mr. Trump For one. Um, <laughs> as a very prominent uh, exemplar. But what about in the region? What, what what are the manifestations of populist leadership so in, the, in the Asia Pacific? Even in India itself, which is the country that I know best, in the region you have, of course, uh, Narendra Modi, uh, the leader of the BJP and now Prime Minister of India, who uh, really styled himself as a populist, appealing to the people uh, directly, trying to forge this uh, direct bond as a charismatic yet still ordinary uh, man of the people. Uh, and uh, the BJP party, uh, Narendra Modi's party, won a, an outstanding victory in uh, 2014, becoming um, the first government for really a generation to have single party rule uh, in India. But of course, not limited to India. The region's other uh, major democracies, including the Philippines uh, and Indonesia, uh, both also have populist leaders. And by some definitions, so does Japan. So it's really quite prevalent across the Asia Pacific, where you have these forms of charismatic populist leader who tries to establish direct relationships uh, with voters, rather than appealing through the traditional party-based mobilization that we would typically recognize here in Australia, or perhaps in, in Western Europe. And so Mr. Trump, did the same thing as a candidate where he really moved against the Republican Party establishment and tried to forge these direct links uh, with voters. And what we see because of these direct, unmediated relationships between leaders and followers that such populist leaders often have a great deal of leeway when they're in power. Uh, they tend not to be constrained by the checks and balances of a party, um, and they even push against the checks and balances of, uh, say, the judiciary, the legislature, uh, and even the free press, with Mr. Trump just very recently declaring uh, the media to be an enemy of the people uh, and going so far as to say that he's at war with the media. So these are really char uh, characteristic of uh, populist uh, sentiments towards other institutions of government uh, and towards the people. And what kind of contribution can scholars like yourself and, and others working in this area um, contribute to uh, a better understanding of, of these sort, kinds of dynamics and movements? So for myself, and I think for some of our, our other presenters, what we're trying to do is to understand first why populists get into power. Um, uh, in large part, we, we tend to want to uh, resist this or to, to constrain populists. So we want to understand why they get into power. Why are parties, uh, normal moderate parties, failing? Uh, in the face of uh, these kind of uh, populist appeals. So we see uh, in Europe the rise of uh, several populists, several very important elections coming up uh, this year, both in Holland and in France, um, which could have a major impact across uh, the continent. Um, we've seen the impact of uh, UKIP and Nigel Farage's leadership with regard to with Brexit, and we've already mentioned um, 
Donald Trump. So we want to understand why these populist movements uh, gain traction and get into power uh, or influence um, things such as uh, events such as Brexit. We also then want to understand what happens when populists do get into power if they are victorious. So here we can study things like uh, law and order under uh, Rodrigo Duterte's uh, Philippines, for instance, where you've had this um, really amazing uh, just a rejection of the, the rule of law and due process under Duterte, uh, with now it's believed several thousand people having been uh, extrajudicially uh, assassinated uh, by his regime and certainly with his sanction. Uh, in India, you've had uh, journalists being uh, repressed, uh, several of them killed, um, the media then under attack, and a real consolidation of the media under um, uh, Modi's influence. Um, and you can see this uh, influence so in the judiciary, in treatment of the press, um, in, uh, with respect to opposition parties, um, and various other institutions in, in society. So we want to know what happens when populists get into power. Um, in some of the early research in my book uh, and in an article that I've uh, also published, we do find that uh, systematically, it's not mm. just in these uh, unusual cases, but populist <coughs> rule is generally bad for the things that we uh, associate with democracy, these um, constraints on executive uh, power, so things that prevent this turn into authoritarianism. Uh, in current research I have going on, uh, it looks at the effect of populist rule on the media. And again, we find um, populist rule is bad for press freedom, bad for freedom of expression. Uh, and these things have serious consequences for democracy and uh, for the people living uh, in those societies. So these are really the two dimensions, mm. what causes it and, and what are the consequences. Really fascinating, Paul, and clearly a, 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 a very important topic indeed. Can you tell us... Um, Finally, a little bit about the the actual um, series itself. I mean, you'll be having seminars. Um, what about the sort of outcomes that you're aiming for, and what what kind of shape are they likely sure. to, to take? So, in terms of the uh, content of the series itself, we'll be looking to hold uh, at least six, and maybe up to uh, eight or even ten uh, sessions over uh, 2017 beginning in uh, mid-March um, with the visit of uh, Professor Pippinaris of uh, Harvard's Kennedy School of Government. She happens to be working on a book on populism uh, at the moment, largely on uh, Western Europe, but looking at populism more generally. So she's going to come and give us some of her insights to kick us off. We then have uh, Dr. Takis Papas, who's also um, scheduled to visit right at the end of the year to uh, tie everything up, and he's also uh, working on a book manuscript uh, on populism as well. So there'll be uh, individual projects that are building into this series uh, of several distinguished visiting academics and also academics from the ANU uh, itself who are working on this issue of populism uh, and leadership. So we'll cover really the whole sweep of uh, the region uh, from uh, Japan in the Northeast uh, down to uh, India, hopefully in uh, South Asia, and possibly across to the Pacific as well, where we've seen, if you like, the absence uh, of populism and other forms of leadership um, instead. So it'll really be quite a broad sweep. We'll also place uh, Trump's victory in terms of what it means for um, the Asia and the Pacific as well. So uh, substantively, we hope to, to cover a lot of issues by drawing on uh, both these visiting uh, academics and also the academic expertise of um, the ANU and the Bell School in particular. So we have several books that are going to be produced, um, as you kind of indicated, uh, coming out of this. Uh, one that I'm working on, Dr. David Envil, Professor Pippinaris, um, and Dr. Takis Papas, all have book projects that are going to come out of this. But if all goes well, uh, towards the end of 2017, we may even have an additional workshop where we try to draw together some of these um, different research agendas um, and possibly publish something collaboratively together. Thanks very much, Paul. It sounds like a really um, exciting prospect. Um, and I'd just like to um, uh, encourage uh, everyone to come along who's interested in these really important issues. Um, as Paul says, the Horizon Seminar Series 2017 will be kicking off probably in late March of this year. Um, there will be uh, around six seminars. Uh, these are open to all comers. Uh, you'll all be most welcome. Uh, and we look forward to, to meeting you later in the year.